Investigation three, particles. So in this investigation, I will walk you through all of the different activities or demonstrations or investigations that we have done, and you can follow along as we go. Um, we mostly are focused on gases in this investigation three, and even more specifically on the particles of gases. At the end, we will touch on states of matter. But mostly right now, we're talking about these little critters, the particles of gases. And the first thing I need you to do is, in your spiral notebook, I want you to pause the video and write down what your goal is, or what your goal should be. And we should almost have this goal completed at this point. So the goal is students will investigate and understand the properties of a gas and use the particle model to explain the invisible interactions that account for the observable behaviors of gas. So that's our goal. You can pause the video and write that down. And then as far as the notes, these are the notes. And I picked out the most important things from this Particles Investigation 3 that I think 6th graders should be familiar with. And if you can think back to the activities we, we've done and connect those things to these notes, that's exactly what I want for you. So note number one, matter is made of particles. Note number two, every substance is defined by a, a unique particle. So every substance has a unique particle. And that goes back to what we learned in the last investigation about substances and then further about elements that make up substances. So every particle is unique. Gas is matter. It has mass and it occupies space, which we refer to as volume in science. Gases are composed of widely spaced individual particles in constant motion. Gases are in constant motion, the particles are. Number five, there is nothing between gas particles except for space. Number six, gas compresses, meaning particles get closer together when force is applied or when heat is applied. Number seven, gas expands, particles get further apart when force is taken away or when a gas is cooled. And number eight, during compression and expansion, the number of particles in a sample of gas do not change. The space between the particles does change. Pause the video, write those into your notes for investigation three. This was the capture the gas demonstration. And what we did in that demonstration, if you remember, I, um, let me see here, I'll just hit play. Okay, this demonstration is called Capture the Gas. We're going to see if gas actually does take up space. Does gas actually have volume? Volume. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is I have some citric acid here, C6H8O7. I'm going to add a 2 milliliter spoonful of it to this container. Okay. And in this container, I'm going to add sodium bicarbonate. It's NaHCO3. So we'll add this in here. Now, the question for you is, if I add 10 milliliters of water, will I get a chemical reaction? Will the balloon, which is inside of a stopper, or around the end of a stopper, will the balloon fill up? So, I'm going to pull up 10 milliliters of water. Let's put it in the citric acid first. I don't see any visibly visible bubbling. Shake that around. So we can say no chemical reaction is taking place at this point. Let's do the same thing with the sodium bicarbonate. Pull up 10 milliliters of water. Put it in there. The reason why we're putting the stopper on is to see if we can't capture the gas. Well, neither one of them appear to be 
causing any type of reaction. So the water with the sodium bicarbonate and the water with the citric acid alone does not cause a reaction. So the next thing we should do is see what will happen if we put the two together. So I'm going to dump this in quickly, put on the stopper, and we see that there's visible bubbling and the balloon is increasing. So citric acid, sodium bicarbonate and water result in a chemical reaction and we know that because gas is given off and we also know that gas is trapped because it fills the balloon. So from this demonstration I want you to be thinking that yes, gas has volume, it takes up space, and we could actually weigh this balloon with the air to find the mass, but we won't do that yet. Okay, so that was the capture the gas demonstration, which was our first, our first eye-opening experience where we say, hey, gases actually do have volume, they take up space. You were to fill out and you can, as I go through this video, you can you can be checking like, okay, I have page 22 and I did the procedure and I came up with an average for the group, for my group. So it's another way of keeping it so you um, you can kind of keep track of what you've done and making sure you're staying organized. All right, so let's watch this one okay, now. So you have read through the procedure. This just goes through for today's what lab. You did in the and lab. In your tray, you have and this a would be most beneficial for stopper. kids that were absent. You have a so I just go I go through the materials and then I go through the procedure. Citric acid to our sodium bicarbonate. And essentially and we're just our adding so our sodium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate a two and then the scoop. citric acid solution. The problem solution, here is that it's hard to get that which is this, in there into the glass. Down. So what you can do is you take a piece of paper, fold it in half, fold it in and half And we're measuring again, it so with really the like um, quarter, and then make the a little plunger. funnel. So then when you dump... So I'll fast forward this one and what it's showing is obviously and it's important that all of us use a two milliliter scoop of sodium bicarbonate and we put a two milliliter scoop into a hundred milliliters of water. So once it's done you look to see where the last line is, you figure out your intervals and that looks like about 28 milliliters. 28 milliliters. If you're not sure how to read this call me over. So you'll do that three times and take your average Find the average, add up the three, add up the three positions the plunger ended at, and divide by three. And that is the, that would be the conclusion of this lab. And I okay, so that is the conclusion of that lab. That's just sort of a visual to let you, let, you know, just remind yourself, oh, that's what we did in how much gas a lab. So you should check your spiral notebook and make sure that's in there. We... We answered these questions, how much gas B, and this is on page 23. Check your spiral for page 23. And remember, you check all of your answers, and those answers are posted on Schoology, so you can make sure you're accurate. The next thing we did was um, page 24. Page 24 is what's in the bubbles, what's in the bubbles, and you did this one with a partner. And then once again, you checked it on Schoology. Uh, Miss Gilsdorf was here, and um, she did, when she was being observed, she did inflate the ball demonstration. And we can do a quick review of that. Okay, this is the inflate the ball demonstration. In this demonstration, I'll be using a triple beam balance. One, two, three beams, and one, one pan. And it should balance 
over here, which it is, and I'll be using a brand new rubber ball, and I have a pump with a needle. And before I do this demonstration, I'm going to find the mass of the rubber ball before it's pumped up. Put it on. So I've got 200 and 90, 291 point, two hundred and ninety one point eight grams, two hundred and ninety one point eight grams. Now I'm going to pump this ball up. All right, so I, I go ahead and pump it up and then I find the mass again after it's pumped up. Go above the white line. Uh, yep, it is now. So it's 291.8. Now, now it's gone a little bit above zero, so I know it's added some mass. So now it's 292.1. We'll call it 2. So, this demonstration shows that air or gas, which is a phase of matter, has volume, the ball got larger, and it also has mass, the amount of matter in the ball increased because we, have, we uh, forced an air into this space using this pump. Okay, so that's, that's the uh, takeaway from that little demonstration. And then we moved on and we did getting to know gases with syringes, tubes, and bubbles. So in this investigation, you took these items, you took these items and used them just to investigate. Okay, so in this activity that you're going to be doing in class, you and your partners will have four, four syringes and you'll have four pieces of flexible tubing here. And all I want you to do is experiment. Oh, I forgot to say we also have some clamps that we can use. Some little clamps. Just experiment with the flexible tubing. Seeing, see what happens when you connect some of these up, pull on the plunger, push on the plunger, put clamps on. Maybe you can get some neat things to happen. All at the same time, as you're, as you're doing this activity, I want you to be thinking, why is this happening? What is happening with the gas, or what is the gas doing? Okay, so you went on to do that investigation. To this sheet here, Discuss Air as Particles, page 25. You want to check to make sure you have this one completed, and you could check this one against uh, the correct answers in Schoology. And one of the other things on the and the last um, little video that you just watched, and I uh, forgot to show you or talk to you about, I need to delete that line. Um, one of the things was to get a, P, a, a little ball, a little bubble, air bubble, from uh, packing. I'm losing my thought here. But you had a little bubble from, oh, what is that stuff called? We'll just call it an air bubble. And we stuck it inside of the, the um, syringe. And the first thing we did is we pushed down on the plunger. So we pushed in this direction. And we watched what happened to, the, to this bubble as we decreased, decreased the mass. Not the mass, decreased the the volume, the amount of space the air has. So this plunger right here, this plunger right here, went in this direction, and then we said, well, what happens? What happened to the, the bubble? Well, we can see what happens to the bubble. The bubble loses its bubbly shape, but one thing I want to point out is that 
the little dots represent the particles of the gas, and those dots still stay uniformly distributed. They don't clump up. They still stay kind of an um, average distance apart, even though, even though the bubble itself becomes um, misshapen. So the takeaway here is that as you reduce, as you reduce the volume that a gas has, the particles just get closer together. The number of particles does not change. They just get closer together. Okay. All right, so then these are some notes that I feel are important enough for me to have typed down, and I want you to put these, attach these to your notes that you've already taken. Air is a mixture of gas. Air has mass and, and volume. Air can be forced into a smaller space. That's called compression. And when the force holding air in a smaller space is removed, air expands. So these are important, and these, these are just four properties about air, or I should probably be calling them gas, but these are four important properties that you need to have in your spiral notebook. And then moving along, we've done, um, we've done this activity as well. It's page 26. And this just explains once again that gas has a volume, and as we reduce, as we reduce by pushing down on the plunger, as we reduce the volume, the number of particles does not change. And as we pull up on the plunger, when we have expansion, this is expansion, this is contraction the number of particles does not change. It's still the same, and I believe we had 20 particles, and I'm just going to put a bunch of dots in, but there should be 20 in each, and they should be spaced pretty evenly apart. And then from this, we went on, and there was a little example here that we can... Oh, now I can't do so. Let me move this out of the way. We had this short video here that lets us view experimenting with foam cubes and the bubble from bubble wrap. Okay, what we had in um, investigating the different square cube uh, foam pieces, we had one that was uh, blue, and I call this closed cell, meaning that it, it looks like it has sort of a film around it. And that also means that uh, air can't pass through this, this cube. And then we had the gray cube. And if I held the cube up to the light, you could actually see a little bit of light through it. So we call this open cell, meaning and that... And those two um, cubes are the, pretty much the exact same size at this point. And then what we did is we put the, cu the uh, cube in the, in the barrel push the plunger down and we notice that the, nothing happened to the cube and we said the air particles are being forced out the end of the cube so then obviously our next question the en to the ask end of the would syringe. be what would happen if we contained or covered the the end of the syringe and we we push down on the plunger making less volume and we can see that if we compress, expand, compress, expand, the cube does the same thing. It compresses and expands, sort of like the bubble wrap that we had done earlier in an investigation. So if we take the blue one out and we put the gray one in, same thing, if push down on the plunger, nothing happens to the cube. It's just forcing the air particles out. So now let's start with uh, a fixed volume, catch all of the air particles in the, in the plunger, and then reduce the volume by squeezing down. Nothing happens. Nothing happens at all to the, the gray cube. And that is because air particles are passed through the gray open cell cube. And then we can compare both of them together. One visibly appears.
appears to shrink, and the other one, nothing happens. Okay, so that was the activity. Okay, and then from that activity, moving along. Now we're going through all this so you can organize your spiral notebook. Um, we had to answer the questions, air and syringe B, and these questions, just like all the other ones, are, are found on Schoology for you to check your work. So if we, if we look further at the air and the syringe, I thought this was interesting enough to, to show you. We have a clamp on here, and we've caught this many air particles. This was the gray cube. This was the blue. And the, the blue cube, you can see that there's room for the gas to escape. So this was kind of a close-up. And those are little spots where the gas can escape. Well, in the, in the, in the blue cube, there's no, there's no place for the gas to escape. But you do see there's space around. There's space around the particles inside the cube. So what happens when we compress we compress the cube, and if I lined them up, we can see we compress, meaning we uh, make, make less volume for the particles to hang out in. Once again, the particles stay the same number, and they stay the same size. They simply get closer together. And we can see what happens in the gray cube. More particles are forced into the cube, but it doesn't affect the cube itself because some can escape. But in the blue cube, and I thought this was pretty interesting, this cube actually shrinks and the particles stay the same size, particles stay the same size, but the distance between the particles changes. Just like the distance between the particles in this whole volume change, you can see they stay pretty uniformly spaced. Okay, so then this was another picture of what the foam cubes look like. Okay, it was before and after, a before, before pressure, after pressure. Okay, the gray before and after. Look at that. And then we uh, come to the particle questions on page 29. And... This is SRB15. They're on the student resource book, page 15. So you'll, you'll need to read um, pages 14 and 15. And my directions for that are right here. And you can check your answers against my answers on Schoology. The last um, part here is page 31. Three phases of matter questions from page 22, and I believe that's pages 16 through 22 that you need to read. These are the directions, 16 through 22 is right. Read the directions, answer these questions, and I've been saying over and over, restate the question, make sure you have a capital and a period. Take pride in how you write. One last thing before the conclusion of this very, very short video is I want you to be thinking about, now we've talked about gases. This is the one we've discussed mostly in class now with particles in investigation three. But the other forms of matter are solids. We have liquids. And then the third one in this picture is gases. I want you to start thinking about how solids, liquids, and gases compare and contrast. Solids have a definite volume, and they have a definite shape, and they sit on the bottom of their containers. Liquids have a definite volume. They take up a definite amount of space. But their shape changes to, fit, to fill the bottom of their containers. So their shape will change depending on the container. Gases have no definite volume. So the gas in the room just spreads out to take up the entire room. They don't have a definite shape, and they always fill their containers. So those are some interesting similarities or differences between solids, liquids, and gases. And another picture that will um, 
help us understand solids and liquids and gases even better, I think would be these pictures. And these are the particle pictures. Let me get these situated here, geez. These are the particle pictures, and this would be solids, very, very tightly compacted particles. Liquids take the shape of their container. You can see a little spaces in here, but not much. Gas, almost all space, fill their container, spread out to take the shape of whatever container is there. Liquids will settle on the bottom, and then you could argue some gases could do that too. But these are the particle views for solids, liquids, and gases. And this is what would happen if you compress each of them. The particles of a solid are uh, touching and bonded tightly. Force cannot change the shape of the solid or push the particles closer together. Liquid. The particles of a liquid are touching, but they can move. The force can change the shape of the liquid, but cannot push the particles closer together. And the last one, the one we've been studying in class, the gas, the particles of a gas have a lot of space between them. Force can change the shape of the gas and can push the particles close together. So, that's the conclusion of this video from all of, all of Investigation 3 on particles. And we remember we focused most of our attention in, in this investigation on particles of a gas. So make sure you've taken down the notes. And a good way to study is to review those notes. And go on Quizlet and make sure you're understanding the vocabulary by doing some of the, the little testing mechanisms on the Quizlet app.